It does work. It does really work. All you right. Have, but you have to take a shot twice a week. I'm gonna, I'll give you the first shot. Twice, twice a week? I've been yeah, shot since I've been on steroids. Are you short? Yeah, All right. I don't, ah, ah, geez. Oh my God. Hey, that was so epic. This is what it feels like to be Tom Segura. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Chrissy Chaos. Today, I have a great guest on, someone who's never been on the Chaos before. He's been on Hey Babe. I've been on his show. We've been in the same area for a couple of years now, but he's never been on the show, and I'm going to tell you who he is. First of all, he was super involved in the AIDS movement in the 1980s. He, some people say he created it. I don't, but he was involved in it. He started on radio before he was even a doctor. And a lot of people were like, you know what? You can't be a personality and a doctor, but he's actually been doing radio longer than he's been a doctor. He has triplets. He was in the movie Wild Hogs with John Travolta. <laughs> Don't forget that. He was both, he's, one, he's, in the, he's in a very rare club. He was both in The Family Guy and The Simpsons. Mm. Almost impossible. He's published at least six books. Mm. He sings opera. And he is one of my founding fathers, his name is Dr. Drew Pinsky, everybody. Founding father. Yes, you're one. Well, you, I, you and I have spent so much time together in the last couple of months, I feel like we should be sleeping together. It's yeah, like well, we, we're, we're going steady in some weird way. You mean again? <laughs> I want to sleep. Yeah, because he's trying to say that we haven't slept with each other, but the truth is, yeah. Well, I'm like regularly. Like, we should move yeah. in. No, because you do. You have what a modern-day founding father would look like. Like, if we were going to make America now, wow. the founding fathers would look like you. You got the gray hair. You have the glasses. You're a bit metrosexual. We kind of can't pin down your sexuality or your, where you stand politically. Mm. You're extremely smart. You're jacked. You seem like you support all causes. You're, got, you're a good guy, and you're, on, and, you've, and you're a cancer survivor. So these are, the, these are the things that would make a founding father. So, so from now on, when I enter a room, I want you to just walk ahead of me, introduce me, yes. give, me give me the intro. It would be yes. perfect. Yes, 100%. Great. So. Dr. Drew, and you know we had you on uh, on Hey Babe um, yeah. a couple of weeks ago. We had fun. It's gonna it's fun. Great, me, you, and great Sal Volcano. But Sal came in a little bit late. Yes. And so, but before he came in, you and I we were talking. We were talking a lot about being dads. Now you literally hit the trifecta when huh. you had triplets. Yeah. Okay. You had literally three at one time. I did not know your sperm was Puerto Rican. But you, that they made, came in and made triplets. Now, I want simply, because I, you know, a lot of our, the, the listeners here, a lot of them have children. We talk a lot about parenting. You know, yeah. I'm a parent. So I couldn't imagine, mm. okay? And I'm sure if I told you before you had triplets, you couldn't imagine the idea of trying to, when they're at that stage, trying to change three diapers oh, or yeah. deal with three babies oh, yeah. at once. So how did you get through that? Well, you, you, we got obviously very, very good at it very quickly, right? I mean, any nannies or help or anything? Yeah, we, we had manpower. You have to. It's dangerous without right. some manpower because you're always the best you're at is man to man, right? If you right. hire somebody, there's the parents and then right. one other person or a By the way, he's not throwing up the white power symbol. He's doing the number three. Oh, it's just Jesus. FYI. That's just the way they do it in yeah, football. Yeah, but, but that will be the, th but that will yes. be the thumbnail. <laughs> is Dr. Drew going Oh, my God. <laughs> So, All right, do I have to do it this way? Yeah, yeah. Um, and he meant, when he said manpower, he did mean people power. People power, yes, yes, correct. And they actually were usually women, oftentimes, strangely enough. There it is. But, but the, the, that's, you know, usually you have two parents and one child, you're, you're in a zone, right? Yes. With three on three, that's the best you get with triplets. Right. You're never six on three, ever. Right. No. Ever. And so it, it was tough right away. Uh, you go into survival mode extremely quickly. Mm -hmm. Um, in terms of, I forget what my wife, she added up the diapers at one point. It was like 20 or 30 a day or something crazy like that. We had these diaper things. Yeah. We'd, we'd, oh, my God. Um, I remember I went when they were maybe about a year old. I had to film something for a pilot or something. And it was it was about the radio show. And I, and I you know, we I'm just, we would just change, you know, change, change diapers and uh you know, changing, changing. And I went into um, this makeup person so sat in the chair and she goes, what's, what's this? It was because I would, I would change and then sometimes do this. Oh. I had just stool all through my hair, diarrhea, what? baby, like the, the yellow baby diarrhea, wow. all through my hair. 
and didn't and you notice didn't, it. You didn't smell it because you just get I, used to the smell. You just get used to it. It's just incredible. And so you're going to survival mode. Uh, you know, it's when you th that period in the early '90s, there was a lot of super multiples because we we're a fertility campaign, right? And they didn't know how to give you twins or, or singlets. They had to. They generally implanted five, and you got what you got. Got it. And there was so there were a lot of triplets and, and quadruplets at the time. Wow. And so we had lots of friends who had triplets, and we were part of a triplet group and stuff because there was plenty of support out there. And you go into survival mode. Uh, we were advised by our obstetrician uh, to reduce. They do these selective reductions where they abort one of them to try to give you twins. Whoa. Because he showed me all this literature about how the marriages don't survive and the health of the everybody's not good and. And uh, we, we, I know, right? And so we went into a hotel room for like two days, just locked ourselves in. And we're like, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? And we just couldn't do it. We were just like, we, we so you were about to abort one of them. We, we were being advised to do so. My wife, right. in retrospect, says she never contemplated it, though we did sit in a, week, in a room and talk about it for a long time. Yeah, you'll show her but, the hotel and, receipts and when it was, from that weekend. I remember where we were. And, to, and, <laughs> I, and when it was super clear what we were, what we were going ahead, yeah. I literally felt like I was playing poker. I took my chips just went, okay, I'm all in. That's wow. it. We were just all in on parenting now. And so whatever it cost, whatever we needed to do, whatever, we just did it. And that approach saved our marriage saved everybody's mental health we just just we were all in with parenting for 12 years yeah see i i think to a lot of people you know who have uh you know b been through that like gotten an abortion and then had a child after i've went through obviously not me but you know women i'm with we've went through it public about it and it's like you always after you have the child when you think oh i couldn't possibly raise this child in this world do you realize like the the you're never it's never the right time to have a kid you just when it's given to you you figure it out nature figures it out so for you so there's a great uh, phrase that a close psychologist friend of mine would say oftentimes he would go there's never a good time to be born there's never a good time to get married there's never a good time to die yeah there's never a perfect time for any yeah. of that you just it's just you got to kind of Put your bet down yes. and, and roll. Yeah, I, I think Seneca, one of the Stoics, said the future lies in, lies in uncertainty, so live immediately. And that's why I always try to think about that, where I'm like, hey, if something is given to me, like a child, just you'll make it work. Deal with it. You'll. I would always think like there's like example now. I, I I'm I'm. It's tough for me to like live in a house, right? Like mm. I'm not from. A, I'm grew up in apartments my whole life. I'm like I want to live in a house. We we moved to a house and. Staten Island, which is like the Los Angeles of New York, suburban style, spread out, drive everywhere, whatever. And now we want to live in an apartment and we think we found an apartment. But, you know, right away, me and Jasmine, my girl, are like, can we fit our kids? We have three kids. Can we fit them in a three bedroom apartment? And then I was speaking to my family about it. And my dad's like, Chris, I was one of five with my mother, father and grandmother Grew up in a one-bedroom apartment in the Bronx, and not only did we make it work, we loved it. We loved it. We like flourished. So he's like, "You're create, you're you're making, you're creating these problems in your head that don't exist." The children, you're still in control of them. As uh, you, they, they, you still will dictate how they feel. If yeah. you're happy about it and it's fun, then guess what? It's going to be happy and fun for them. Yeah, I have heard, uh, you know, people make a lot of. You know, we were six kids in a house with just my mom. And when you talk to those people as adults, the, you know, you go, "Oh my God, what was that like?" Oh, we had a good, we had a blast, we had a good yeah. time. All my brothers and sisters, cousins yeah. were in there sometimes. Yeah, my, my father even said to me, he "Goes, you know, you live in New York City. What? Why do you want to stay in your house? Right. You live in this." Well, well that's the crazy thing about this city. You yeah. just want to be out. The, your your apartment is a place to sleep. That's it. To and sleep maybe and eat and eat. So it's like do your homework. This whole idea of. You know, you're here in, in what, you know, people from all, despite what the media tells you, people every day are trying to get into this country and then get to New York. So people, it's the craziest city in the world. People it's who so, shit on New York, I understand why, but, it's like too, ev but it's, everybody's it's, trying to get here. It's so, well, it's just so incredible. How could you not appreciate what's here? It's hard for me to understand that. Listen, I get because, I, you know. Maybe you don't like people. If you don't like people, this would be hard. But if you don't, but say, that's the thing. If you don't like people, then you're like, for me, like a person that I probably wouldn't get along with anyway. So I'm like, I want to be around people who like yeah. and enjoy people. Or yeah. if you don't like people, it's probably because you were scarred. You have some kind of stress. Right. Like, 
I feel like with the, I feel like if with the right therapy and kind of soul searching, everybody likes people. If you don't like people, you're you're injured somehow. I agree with you mentally. 100%. You know, so so. But so, there is a little bit of a bias. Like you, I think you, you and I are probably people that I love people. I love the human experience. I love yeah, everything about. I just it. want to touch I them. I can't. <laughs> I've told you, you got to stop that. Sorry. But but, <laughs> but I, lo- I really love everything about it, and I understand if, if people aren't in that zone. Yes. But but you but to not like people, it defies our sort of basic instincts and what what creates thriving and happiness. Yeah, exactly. What yeah. creates thriving and happiness? Because I'm like you know, and also to me, what I'm I try to think about like what is really happiness and like you know my daughters are getting a bit older well, i think we misuse the word we don't know what we're talking about right mm-hmm. do, you, do you want to get into that 100 percent. you ever want to see your precious chrissy the cookie again you will only change is your only chance is August. Borgata, Atlantic City, September, Southern California, Portland, Seattle, NYC, Las Vegas, October, Nebraska, Missouri, Chicago, North Carolina, November, Ohio, Florida, New England, and that's if he's still alive. Lo más duro, el adobo. Please. Help me. They said they were going to pour adobo on all my wounds. No, Chris. No, Chris. I'm sorry. What's the oh, I love Mark Man, Anthony. All right. Now that we're in the thick of summer, you might be looking for wholesome, convenient meals to support sunny, active days. Factor, America's number one ready to eat meal kit, can help you fuel up fast with flavorful and nutritious ready to eat meals delivered straight to your door. You'll save time, eat well, and stay on track reaching your goals. Too busy with summer plans to cook but want to make sure you're eating well? With Factor, skip the extra trip to the grocery store and the chopping, prepping, and cleaning up too while still getting the flavor and nutritional quality you need. Factor's fl- uh, fresh, f- never frozen meals are ready in just two minutes. So all you got to do is heat them, enjoy them, and go back out and enjoy the summer sun. Sal Volcano uh, uses these, and he loves them, and he's... He really is, is looking fit and, and hot and sexy, and I eat those Factor meals too every time he brings them in. Um, we eat them together, and they are delicious. Head to factormeals.com slash chaos50 and use the code chaos50 to get 50% off. That's code chaos50 at factormeals.com slash chaos50 to get 50% off. Yeah. What's your approach to happiness? So what, what, do you, what do you When you say happiness... What the F are you talking about? For me, when I say happiness, and this is something that I, I learned, too, from the Ryan Holiday, the Daily Stoic, who I know you know we've spoken about, right? Yeah, I, I uh, launched Ryan Holiday into Stoicism. Really? He was a college kid. I was giving a sort of this weird little roundtable talk, and he was like a little nerd, was a uh, journalist that came in from, I don't know, Arizona or something. Right. And, Some uh, bullshit state that's not goes, one of the original 13. <laughs> And he goes, uh, he goes, what are you reading right now? And I, I read, particularly, I'll go through reading binges, and I will read Ego is the Enemy is a Good Obstacles the Way is the great one. That's his yes. great book. And um, Stillness is the Key is good, too. I like that. And trust me, I'm lying. He wrote a marketing book about you know, the, how the internet works, and he was clairvoyant on that one. Um, but and I've learned ever since that it's, it's, what goes viral on the internet is never what you say or do. It's what somebody says you said or did. Right. Always. Right. But anyway. So he comes up to me and he goes, what are you reading? I thought, oh, this poor kid. He's not, he is not going to be interested in this. I go, look, I, I read f- peculiar stuff, but right now I'm going on a binge in this one direction and I'm reading this thing called The Enchiridion by a guy named Epictetus. Sure. And, and, and uh, he's like, well, tell me. what was I saying? He, took, yeah. he went and got it and just launched him into this great career as a stoic philosopher well yeah well that i i think i didn't know that that's 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 cool to know because i've been listening to his and i listen to his podcast because for me when i see it's every day 10 15 minutes most i'm like i can consume this i can i can deal with this i can really good stuff trying to learn something every day i read his book the daily dad every day but what he said was i think and i don't know if this was his definition or someone said it but when i heard it a while ago i was like oh that actually would be happiness and it might just be specifically for career but just autonomy having autonomy freedom yes and i think that and that has nothing to do with money correct you know although money creates freedom 
Yes, that's what people say money doesn't solve all your, they say money doesn't solve problems. I'm like, well, it solves a lot of them. <laughs> You know, it, it, not it, all, all this business about, you know, people, if they have more than $75,000 in their bank account, they're not happier than somebody with $4 million or something. Turns out not to be true. Right. Turn, turns out that, that, that to a point, I mean, $100 million, no, that's not, you don't need that. Right. But to have a little bit of autonomy and freedom, right. you got to have some flexibility sure. in what's on hand. Uh, and so they do find that people are better and people are different that way too. Some people have, you know, if, if you're more OCD, you need a little bigger cushion because that's how your brain works. Right. Uh, and if you're somebody who likes to have your back against the wall and be challenged, you're going to be fine with, with less. Uh, people are different all over the place. But back, back to happiness and autonomy. Okay. So, you know, this country, unfortunately... Uh, two things we got wrong with happiness. We stuck it in our constitution. Yeah. And the French are mystified by that. How can you give somebody the right to happiness? Like that's a bizarre idea. Right. Um, but we shouldn't have used the word happiness. We should have said something like thriving or autonomy or something else because happiness became then this pursuit of euphoria in this country. And even when we, you know, even the, the translations of Aristotle's work on happiness he didn't, he didn't use a word that translated as happiness. We made it happiness. Right. He used this word, there is the life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. There it is from our, from our uh, the, the founding document, which is the yes. declaration. Um, you could argue that the, the Constitution is the founding document, but, but the principles of the, that were later memorialized the Constitution were laid out in the declaration. Declaration, right. Yeah. That's the big one. Um, yeah. Uh, That's our mind Kampf. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure the British thought that. Uh, but so so we, we've become preoccupied with really euphoria. We want right. to be we want to be like all euphorically happy all the time, right? right. Like, like it, just having a party and you know yeah. re, and I and that's fun. I get it. But you know, as other philosophers have pointed out, you go from you know euphoric satisfaction back to desire. It doesn't. Right. It's just a. It's just an endless yeah. loop. Yeah, and it's almost like I think like the Stoics would say. I've heard like a sense of euphoria. It's almost like a state of mental illness. Like yeah. in a like that is an unsustainable. Well, they worried about pace. it. Yeah, they right. actually worry about it as something that we maybe it's an excess. We shouldn't be in that. that right. we, what we should be looking for is something more nourishing. Right. Something more, uh, you know, sort of like autonomy. And, right. And what and the the word that Aristotle used was eudaimonia. Okay. Okay. And eudaimonia actually translates better as flourishing. Uh, Human, humans are here to flourish. That flourish. was his. And flourishing includes autonomy and independence and creative creativity and all those things. But ultimately, when they really kind of distill down what creates a sense of flourishing, it's it's other it's relationships, it's other people. Yeah, you know it, that's and, and that's what I think is. I used to think. Well, the only thing I got to worry about is my immediate family, my kids and my wife and my neighbor. And now I realize like that we're so connected as yeah. humans, like all of us, that it's yeah. like I got to do if I whatever I'm like, I think the Stoics say, just do what's right. They always just say at all costs, just do what's right, yeah. even if you're not going to ever get an accolade for that, yep. even if the, you're never going to meet the people that that's going to affect in a positive way, just do it anyway. Kant said so that my too. whole thought process yep. has changed a bit. And it's yep. even... It's a great way to live, right? It is. But yep. you know what? The, the thing that specifically I'm struggling with mm. is it's affecting my selling comedy. Out, selling out arenas or yes, theaters? Yes, yes, yes. That. <laughs> so, well, it's so help them out, guys. Yeah. Let's, uh, buy some tickets. ChristyComedy.com <laughs> or I'll kill myself and it's your fault. Uh, so, but it, it, it's like, you know, a lot of comedy I used to have, which I'm realizing now, even my new hour that I'm going to put out, there was a lot of material based off, I don't give a fuck what's happening in this part of the world. It's stupid that we would, oh. we would let, but it's comedy, yeah. you know, like, but, but it's coming from, it was coming from a place of, yeah. I think kind of being a bit narrow minded. Yeah. So now like when I do certain bits about, you know, the war and Ukraine or about the media making us believe that something happening in Seattle is affecting me in New York is all kind of like, oh, wait, no, Marcus Aurelius said that's wrong. Like yeah. it is affecting you. You have, yeah. but so with, so I'm, I'm trying to be, cause I'd be getting so much into stoicism just very recently okay. and reading all that stuff. And, and then it's interesting reading just a page a day. Like the, I read uh, this book, Atomic Habits, oh, yeah. what James Clear. Yeah. So I read just like that two minute rule, like, just do something for two minutes. If you want to start a habit, just yeah. if it's going to the gym, do one push up, do yep. something for two minutes, then stop. People and, don't make enough of habits. Yes. Habits, habits have to be 
repeated and indoctrinated. Right. Ha- Epictetus really. said the habits make the man. Yeah. So and so, what I would do is just read the you know one page of the Daily Dad by Ryan Holiday. Just parenting, good one, and then little by little that got me back into. Well, then I started reading his other books. You know, Stillness is the Key and Ego is the Enemy, and then and then I started going back into my history books. Now, like I said, I'm reading The British Are Coming by mm-hmm. Rick Atkinson, and then I started, and then all of a sudden I'm like, and now it's had this positive impact where now it's like my daughter i would read to her every night you know yeah. she's eight right uh, and and i would read to her but now it's like now it's flipped to she starts reading to me and then it got even and then we were just reading like little kid books but now i have her reading the diary of Anne frank because oh now God. i'm like i want you to, even if you don't understand this you can ask me a million questions we'll look it up together if i don't know the answer but like trying to apply how uh-huh. my mother would always say they're starving kids in africa and i never understood that because mm-hmm. it was just a thing i'm like why don't you actually read these pages of what a girl who's not so different from your age is, you know, a little bit older went through in her life and how, how much different your life is. And it's not kicking in yet, but I think like just the act of it, getting her involved in it, I'm hoping and hedging that it's going to affect her in a positive way. That will pay dividends. So it is, it is connecting to other people's experiences. Right. And so I've gotten to see this kind of phenomenon writ large in recovery you know drug addicts are down and out they're at the bottom of their life they're right. miserable they're suicidal they're terrible and you know what are the things that cause them to rise out of that and all this stuff what we're talking about for sure and having some concept of faith that's helpful um letting go of control that's helpful being you know having an honest reflection on yourself and who right. you are and what you're doing and sharing that with another person connecting and uh and then service Service yeah. is another big way that people. Yeah. So, and and by service, people get confused about that. They think they're you know it's like oh I'm going to go serve it. I'm going to go work for the UN and we're going to serve. No, the real service, the kind of service that that actually creates the flourishing and fills people, is one person just yeah. doing something for one person, something yeah. meaningful for that person. That is what this exchange is about. And people yeah. don't understand how to do that. Right. They don't understand how to do that. And I think you don't, under, a lot of people forget how good like gratitude feels. And oh, yeah. for me, like what I've tried to do, and I've been pretty good at this uh, since January, I made a decision. I said, I don't just like spe- specifically with like clothes and stuff. I was like, I don't need to buy any more mm. things for me. Mm. I just don't need, I, I have, I, I have, I mean, this whole idea of us having a wardrobe is a very new thing. Mm. 200 years ago, even the kings and queens, you would be crazy. You would you yeah. had a few pieces of garment for your whole life. Like yeah. It would be yeah. ridiculous to continuously wear different yeah. clothes. It's like, just wash your clothes in the river, and it's dumb. <laughs> yeah. it, it would be like us having like a new car for the week. They're like, yeah. why do you need this? Yeah. But so what I've been doing is buying things for others. Like, for example, like nice. a, a, a guy who, who I work with was talking about how he really wanted this uh, baseball jersey and his wife was going to get it for him but she was he was like you know i can't afford a jersey like uh, that and, it, and he was just telling me like we were just you know he's a waiter at, at the at, that at is the store. kind of thing man and then i just bought it for him dude. just on a whim i was like i'm buying it for this guy because i can afford it and i'm like let me buy it for him and it was like when you get you know and it what and i told his wife i was like you don't even have don't even say that i gave this to him you, this can be from you i don't need the credit because i was like because it, what's starting to be happening is i'm getting paid in the Deed, I don't need the accolade. Pay for attention it. to what he's saying. This is profound. What you're saying, there it, it is. is. Profound. There I'm it not is. kidding. And tra- we'll translate it for our Chinese. I don't know why listeners. you don't want to start doing it, but it's, yeah, yeah. So, well, so, but, but it, that is that is the real deal. Giving. That's yeah. it. That's gratitude. That's giving. Yeah. That's it's like literally. It's like it's like paying homage to another person. Yes. Something that was really. So, so here's how that's constructed, right? So there was something specific about him, right? Where he really wanted that thing. That was something about him yeah. that he made him want that creatively or whatever it was or a memory or something. And you paid service to that. You paid homage to that. And you you acknowledged it. I, I'm sure it just blew him away. It happened to me when you're the object of that kind of giving. Yeah. It catches your attention, man. Sure. It it, it I I was um remember remember DJ A. M. Adam. Yeah, of Goldstein. course, yeah. He was a friend of mine. He yeah. when he was a you know a terrible drug addict. He died of drug addiction. Yeah, big tragedy. But right. when he was sober, he was really a great sober guy, and he was very helpful with other patients. And he um, came into the radio show one night, and I go, dude, I like those shoes. And and uh, he was wearing some Nikes or something. And and he goes, I'll get you a pair. And I, and I immediately froze. I thought I thought I was embarrassed because a 
I really did. I didn't. I didn't even notice how much I liked those shoes. He noticed it, right? And I was like, "Oh, that's that's something real in me yeah. that he just noticed that I wasn't even paying attention to." But right. He, he's right. I, I and I, but I was embarrassed. You know, I no, no, no. Please don't do that. Don't, don't, come on, come on. I, you're right. I do. Yeah. Well done. Thank you. But don't. Come on. It's yeah. too much. He showed up the next day at my office with a pair of shoes, and I, it was so stunning to me. It it just you it freezes you it catches you in your tracks yeah and he, and I was like I I am so humbled by this and he said you know today this is the giving gesture that keeps me sober so today you keep me sober so right. thank you for this right it's yeah like, oh. yeah it, 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 it is it's like it's like that happens it's almost like it's like a like the selfishness leads to selflessness type yeah. thing where you're yeah. like I'm gonna be try to be the best version of myself, even if that means I have to take a day for me to be away from my family or be, a, because I know that what's going to do is make me a better version of myself yeah. so I can yeah. be like a better father. No, you're doing a good job. To right? my kids. Yeah. Well, but the, I think the thing is like all I can do, all we, any of us can do is control the effort, not the outcome. So like mm -hmm. I'm trying every day, but if the outcome isn't what I want or the outcome is I'll make mistakes or the outcome is I didn't get what I wanted that that's not what it's about it's about mm. what i can only control my effort so yep. i feel like now i feel the happiest i felt in a long time because i'm like i know i'm controlling my effort and it's a, i'm in a weird place because it's like i feel i've felt like my outcomes are actually like really they, they were really good a few months ago like selling a lot of tickets constantly moving and now the outcome isn't as good as it was, even though I have shows on sale, big shows sold out in certain places, but then other markets not doing well and other, and the podcast numbers were dropping and the Patreon numbers were dropping and it's everything's hard. dropping. But my effort has remained the same, but better. Mm. So I feel actually happier mm. today with less stuff, with, with the numbers almost going in a negative direction in certain markers than I did last year when I didn't realize it wasn't necessarily me. It was just like, it was the middle of the pandemic. Every yeah, yeah, there was yeah. a wave of every, but it was yeah. easy, mm. you know. And now it's now it's like it's more normal. But my effort, it's like I'm just controlled by my effort. And my, even like my family, like my girl, she's always like, "You're in here like working every day. You're waking up at five a.m. You're reading. You're taking care of yourself. You're trying to write stuff. Like that's what this is about." And she's right. Like I learned that lesson the hard way when I had a CBS pilot, and it I didn't get it. You know, it was a year of work and didn't get picked up and all that stuff. And I realized like, oh, it was never about getting the show on the air. It was about the relationships I made. Like I made and still friend, very close friends to Chaz Palminteri to this day, who's taught me um, so many things mm. about the business, being a father. Like it was, if, if that was that one thing to become his close friend, mm. then that whole thing was worth it. It's good. But I think we get stuck on, especially in America, especially in the entertainment business, all your outcomes. How much money do you have? How much do you weigh? How, what? You know, it's all these objective things. And I'm like, that's not really... We spoke about before the show started that I saw a study that the happiest group in America are the Amish. Mm. That's what one study showed. And it's why it's because they're not ever striving for more. It's, they're not you, comparing. They're not comparing. You can't be the they're best connected. Amish. They're connected. You know, they're with the people they love. They're supporting people. They're working with their hands. That's something we yeah. lose track of too. Doing stuff, you know, when we, yes. it makes us healthier and happier too. Yeah. Be, outside. Yeah, a sense of completing anything, completing mm. it. Even, even when I sometimes like, because I don't know how to build anything. Jasmine, she's the one. She, she's literally, yeah, like but, when I left today, I swear to God, when I left today, she was painting yeah. one of the rooms. She was literally painting one of the rooms. And I brought her on a tray an egg sandwich I made her and a glass of iced tea. Like a, <laughs> like a woman from 1955. I was like, here you go, honey. <laughs> and, and so she just, and so she... And so that's our relationship, but she feels like such a sense of completion and happiness when she finishes a project. Yeah. And like the couple of times I've done, like I've literally, this Christmas, I built my two-year-old daughter's little Fisher-Price little Barbie house. And I felt, and still when I see it, I'm like, daddy made Did that. that. Yeah. Even though it's like my literal eight-year-old could put it together. <laughs> but it's still, I, and I think about, I thought about that as well with the Amish. I'm like, oh, working with their hands, kind yeah. of waking up when the sun you know, like like what like they they flow with their bodies naturally in nature. When the yeah. sun comes up, they get up. When it goes down, they go to bed. There's yeah. no. It's like everything else that we do sometimes that we think brings us happiness. It's the reverse. It, like, anything that you feel 
I think I'm sure there's examples where I'm wrong, but most things that if they make if it makes you feel euphoric right away, yeah, the bad stuff is coming. Yeah, as yeah. opposed to if you don't feel anything on it right away, probably the result is going to come down the line. Like you go to the gym and you work out for one, two, three days, it hurts. It's you don't see anything. But if you continue to do that, the results are a year from now. Exactly. You know, as opposed to if you start taking the steroids or something like that, you start to see the results so quick and everything, but it's bad for you down the oh, line. Oh, boy. You know? Yeah. So, but speaking of steroids, how do you stay so fit? <laughs> <laughs> I, I have worked, I'm, I don't know what I'm like these days, but I, I started working out when I was like 15 for football and stuff, and I yeah. just stayed with it. I just, I, we talked about it last time. We talked time. about it on Hey Babe. Yeah, but, yeah. I, but I, I feel like, now to talk about it too, like as as a parent, I wanted to. I thought I wasn't sure if you had started your because a lot of people, parents, will start their fitness journey. No, I once lost they have it. children. I, I went. I had trouble finding time to do it back then. Really? Yeah. It went, I, I, that was sort of the lowest point in my ability to do that. Stuff. Like the the worst you felt physically was when you had the kids. Well. <sighs> So I was a severe workaholic, so I was getting up at five in the morning. I was getting to the hospital by six. I was right. I, I just was, you know, coming home at ten at night, and then it just was ridiculous how, how busy I was. It was absurd, and and yeah, no time kids to work and out. this and that, and you know, I'd come back and take the kids to school, or whatever, and just, ugh, it was just incredible. You ever you yeah. ever like driving in the car with the kids, and like you hit a speed bump, and your man boobs jiggle because you haven't been working out, and you go, I should have aborted one of you. <laughs> <laughs> It's a comedian. Give him a break. <laughs> <laughs> you were the one. <laughs> yeah. It was you, stupid. Um, oh, I have a great story about kids in the car. Let me hear. Oh, I don't know if it's appropriate for the show or not. but uh, Trust me, Dr. Drew, anything's appropriate <laughs> okay, for the show. Okay. This is the greatest story of all time <laughs> about my daughter, and she's she, she let me say it publicly. She, she's, she's, she actually studied at Second City a little bit, and she's a mm -hmm. writer now, so she, she likes comedic stories, and this is funny. We are um, driving them to school, and um, I, I may, you know, in terms of being a good parent, I'm not sure that I get the Parent of the Year award uh, for this particular choice. I let them watch South Park early, like, okay. like 12, they're like sixth grade. Right. And uh, I, I tried to watch it with them and, you know, talk about the jokes and things. <laughs> and they, is Cartman really being appropriate here, guys? Um, it's a cartoon. And, and we are driving to school. And all of a sudden, my daughter in the back seat starts singing, finger bang, finger bang, finger <laughs> bang, finger <laughs> bang, and, and I go, whoa, 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 whoa! I go, hang on a second. Do you know what that means? It's a band on South Park, and that's the song they <laughs> sing. And I go, yeah, I know. Do you know? She's looking it up. Do you know what that means? And she goes, no. And I go, can I, you prepared to let me tell you? And I proceeded to describe <laughs> it to her, at which point she started screaming like bloody murder. She goes, I just changed all my screen names and mailed my mail sent to <laughs> Finger Banger. <laughs> and, and my son was sitting in the seat next to me. I thought he was gonna die. He was laughing so hard. His knees, his knees were up in his face. Like, oh, oh, oh. He just he could not get over it. That's I've awesome. never seen anybody laugh that hard in my life. And so we had to like, uh, I don't remember if we turned around or how we did it. We tried to help her change the screen yeah. names. But that was the that's the bang. That's, that's the, the, bang. the finger bangers. The finger there bang. they are. Well, A I know band on South Park. <laughs> it's like, oh, See, geez. and it's interesting now. It's interesting parenting back then with oh. kids that age because. You could just be like, okay, can't watch South Park anymore. But now with like so many different ways for kids to consume. Or some other kid will show it to them. You know, it's, 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 it's almost impossible. Yeah. So for me, because I'm thinking about that, you know, an eight-year-old and a 12-year-old about to be 13, I'm like, well, rather than trying to not let them see it at all, that's impossible. They're going to see it. Yeah, I, I, Just somebody, prepare them for it. I had a long conversation with somebody yesterday about this because I was sort of, my friends that work in screen health, you know, psychologists, they limit their kids to one hour a day. And that's it. And everybody looks at that and goes, it's not possible. I just, they, they'll miss out on things. They won't get their homework. They, 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 I don't want to isolate my kids socially. I mean, how do I manage this? And in the past, I just, I said, well, maybe all the parents are together could agree we're just going to do an hour, everybody, one right. hour screens a day. And uh, I was talking to a parenting person yesterday, and she was like, it's just not realistic. It's just there's so much stuff they need to do on the screen. 
and uh, that it's just you got to figure out a better way of sort of educating them and regulating what they do on the screens and i think that's yeah. probably right yeah trying to just yeah. you know have it be as educational as you can what we've tried to do with what at least the eight-year-old and it hasn't worked but the plan is is try to tell her hey listen you can have one night one day or you know let's say night when you have your hour after you do your homework yeah one one day on mondays it can be tv on tuesdays it'll be reading a book and try to flip them off yeah. back and it sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It's, it's hard work. It is hard work. Also, you know what the hardest part of it yeah. is is as the parent enforcing it because, as much as you know, we try to work on ourselves and be the best we can be. It's like there's times where it's like it is, and people who don't have kids, I don't know if they understand. It is so much easier to just give them oh, that screen. Oh yeah. And I mean, you. I'm talking about like one one way is like you can just go do what you want to do and be at peace and the other way is like you're in an active war zone yeah so 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 a lot of parents myself included i'm just like just you know give up when we sit at dinner yeah. or like we're out to dinner or like just give her the screen like i don't want to deal with her throwing the french fries or yelling and then but i it's weird it's like this thing where it's like that's selfish. I'm just like doing what's best yeah, for me, not yeah. for the kid. But but, sometimes but it's hard you, to override that. Sometimes you are in a survival mode as a parent, and nobody's right. a, there's no perfect parent. No, you you, you got to do stuff to survive. Right. So, yeah, what's going to happen? What and now too something that and I I I'm just trying to see articles about it now, but I stopped doing it um, a few years ago. I would, you know, all fun stuff have like my when my eight year old was little, like one, two, even three, I think she would say like such funny stuff right and or like you know uh and and we would do like little videos right or tour promos for, oh little videos whatever and then somebody sent me a message when she was about i think three that was like hey you know obviously some random fan was like yeah. hey what size shoe does your daughter wear like Ooh. in a creepy way Ooh. and i you know blocked him didn't respond and it could have been Maybe he was a shoemaker. Yeah, and he yeah. Wanted, but just the way the way that my kind of senses went up, I said to myself, "Oh shit, I'm family photos and pictures that our moms and dads have are just in a book that only the family sees. That's right. I'm putting this out to people that she did not. When she gets older, she, my daughter, could very well become a meme." That she didn't ask to be when she's 18, and then right. I'm gonna have to pay for that. And I don't think a yeah. lot of parents were thinking about yeah, that. Agreed. I think they are now. Mm. Like I don't post now. I just have a private Instagram. Never post. It's only in very. It it is like a family album. Mm. It's just my family on this private Instagram, so we can have a place for the photos. But it's every single person is a follower. I know, and they're close. But like the parents nowadays, who I think we're gonna start to see like this kind of first wave of parents who inadvertently like really hurt their child by trying to be innocent but there's like this you know not every i think social media has connected us all in a way that our brains have not developed enough we're not supposed to all be this connected yeah, in a way yeah. you know so yeah. like a parent nowadays who does that i mean do you ever deal with that in your profession like a like or talk to somebody about like a parent who like just really fucked their kids somehow with social media no story comes to mind, but I mean, it's it's got to be common. Yeah, right. right? I mean, this the big regrets as it pertains to stuff you put online or what you allowed your kids to do. You know, usually the where it goes bad is, and this is not the parenting so much, but the kids get exposed to porn and they start. Yeah, you know, average age of exposure is like age nine now. Jesus, it's unbelievable. Yeah. And it's and they start going down a path with it, or they te they get involved in texting that's inappropriate or aggressive right. or violent or sexual. All that is major problems. Major yeah, I stuff. think I I saw something that said now like because of texting, you kind of say a lot of things to someone that you would never say mm. uh, on a first date because that whole you know icebreaker is yeah. broken because like you can you know anonymously or not even anonymously just text anybody something. How'd you that meet you your, your your gal huh how'd you in 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 uh in a bar in okay. uh old-fashioned way old-fashioned way yeah. just the old-fashioned way i was an italian guy or presenting as an italian guy <laughs> the ancestry.com says i'm german but i was presenting as an italian being drawn to a puerto rican girl dancing around in brooklyn told her i was in love with her uh right then right then and there told her i was just it's interesting when i saw jasmine 
I was single at the time, right? So I had, there was a lot of, you know, there was girls. Like you're, I was a single guy for like a yeah. year. Yeah. So it's like I had seen beautiful women. I, it's like I had seen. Nikki Glaser was obsessed with you. Yes. Do you remember that? Yeah. And, and I, was, I was her, whatever they call it, her backup person right. on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Yeah. And you were her phone call. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. And, and I answered that question right. And I know. Yes. And they cut you and off. She, and she cut me off. Yeah, Nikki, Nikki Glenn. She would, be, she would be my wife if she had a penis. <laughs> and so that's the only one thing missing. And so, <laughs> and so, and so. That's where I come in. Yes. And you are. You're, my, you're Nikki Glazer. <laughs> the Nikki Glazer I've always envisioned. You've always wanted. Yep. Yes. So, so, so but with, with Jasmine, she, um, so I had seen these, you know, beautiful women before, but when I saw her, I was like drawn to her in like a way that like has not ever happened did, since. Did, did I tell you this story? That that happened to me with my wife too? No. It's it's the oddest thing. It's weird. Yeah, I, it's when you're when it's never happened to you before, or it's not something you are familiar with. Yeah. It, you never forget it. It's the oddest thing, it, and and it happened to be twice with my wife. So what happened? You like I I I had is your wife that Puerto experience. Rican? No, <laughs> maybe okay. that, that's Corey to ancestry. She's not anyway. Yeah, maybe your girlfriend's not not Puerto Rican. No, I don't know. she is. She okay. has a tattoo on her tit. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> she has a pit bull. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. She's in. Yes. Um, <laughs> but uh, we I saw her at a bar once. She was hosting this talent show or, or this fashion show and i was like this oh, gotta talk to this. i got i have to make contact with this person and it was odd i never experienced it before I, I i was like i i just have to she blew me off bad it was not good left the bar like let's get out of here this right. is terrible two years later we met through business and stuff had the same experience where i didn't remember that experience i didn't really remember it and uh had the same experience and as i was leaving that night i went look I, I i and i told her too i was i can't she remembers me telling her like i'm in love with you or you're in love of my life or something but at the end of the day i gave her my phone number and i was like look i she had a boyfriend i'm like i i don't want to do this i'm not that guy but i feel like i have to do this i have to give you i've never done anything like yeah. that before. and uh she called and we start dating but a year later i found a picture of that night at that bar with her with at the microphone, I go, oh, you were there that night. I didn't even still didn't register was the same person, right? And uh, and I was like, oh my god, same exact experience, yeah, twice. And it's it's it doesn't now usually that stuff. You're a healthy person, so you can kind of go with it, right? But if you have a pattern of being lightning struck by people and then they end up being abandoning, abusive, alcoholic, whatever, yeah, then you got to not trust that thing, okay. But if you're have you know, don't have a lot of trauma and you're a reasonably healthy person, it's a remarkably effective glue in a relationship. And men are way more likely to experience it than women. Really? Mm -hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. And you know, you know what happened with that? I don't know if this is similar to yours, but I was coming off the heels of, for the first time, experiencing a breakup where I, like, couldn't live without this person. I was like shattered mm. as a person. And it's mm. not like it was rebound stuff because that had happened a year, a year and a half before. Yeah, I was yeah. over that. Yeah. But it had like that pain. It's almost like Holiday says the obstacle is the way. It was almost yeah. like I went through you that. You needed to go through break that. Up and to kind be of, open to this. And yeah. almost like rebuilt yeah. myself as like what I want, what I don't want. Yeah. And I was kind of, you know, talking to different girls and going on dates or whatever. But then when I saw her, I was like, holy shit. And we've had a lot of tumultuous times broken up gotten back together broken up gotten too. back together we did too and then and then but now it's like after nine years it's like well we've like gotten through like so much yeah, it's like yes. it's like that it, test of time it, you, you it is it's never purely the healthiest part of us attraction the healthiest right. part of the other person there's stuff right. there that's creating that that level of attraction people don't talk about where attractions come from right. usually from unresolved shit right uh, but if you can if you can process it together which is what we did too it's a remarkable glue it's just yeah. it's just create because you you're 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 as excited and happy to be with that person tomorrow 10 years from now Right. As you are tomorrow now. Right. Yes, I agree. And you know that, what I mean? It's like renewing in some interesting ways. Does that sound familiar? It does. Yeah. And, it, and, and it feels like, too, I think, you know, having children, becoming like a partner. like Well, almost, then, it's, then it's this other thing, too, that nobody ever talks about, which is building a life, building a family. And that just adds immense, immense Well, quality. Well, see, what happened with us is she got, that day I met her, hmm. we then went on a date, 
10 days later and she got pregnant immediately. So mm. I didn't even know her. And I and then there were red flags that popped up in her life, red flags that popped up in my life. But she was already down the line pregnant. We had to then try to make this work. And that caused a lot of our initial mm. problems in the beginning, why there was so much back and forth, back and yeah. forth, break up, get back together, because we're trying to figure each other and out. Also, by all- also, you were how old? 30. Yeah. I mean, you were barely out of your 20s. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. you're young and people in their 20s. Yeah. Are, you know, we're no shit. We're in our yeah. 20s, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I thought. And then, and then so, and so I kind of felt like, you know, this, you know, I would tell you at times like five years ago, like, no, like, you know, we had the child and it's better that, you know, we're not together now. But then with all, as we've started to figure each other out, I'm like, oh no, like she, there's a lot of things that I lack that she fulfills and vice versa. And you still have that feeling that, that yeah, thing? because yeah. because I th- uh, because we feel like you know I, I think we both feel like now like we truly in every sense of the word are partners yeah. for life. Yeah, where we've accepted that about each other, like almost like it's almost like we've kind of felt it used to be. Oh well, if if we don't have this title or that title, then things are w- that's all out the window. Now it's like we're partners. We we've accepted that, and now we're kind of like whatever happens, whether whether we. You are married for 30 years or divorced tomorrow. Yeah. We're partners yeah. and we respect each other and yeah. we have, and we're like on each other's side. And per your stand up routine, she's your kryptonite. She's 100%. Yeah, 100%. She protects you. 100%. She's your force shield. She's my, yes, <laughs> dude. She, yeah, which is, I think. You forget, we came and saw you in Austin. Yes. And so I know. So I know your bit. You I know, know my bits. I thought it was very good. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Well, the people that night didn't, but thank you. And, um, and, and so, yeah, so I think too, like, and that's the thing with specifically like comedy, like it is cathartic. It's like an outlet for me. But after we had Louis CK on here a few months ago and he told me straight up on the show, he was like, you know, just be careful when you're talking about your family, even in comedy, he said, be, be more careful talking about them in podcasts because you have all these half thought out stories and things you might say that could come back to bite you stand up. It's a little bit more well thought out, but he was like, you know, try to, if you can be general, even though I know it's better to be, you know, as personal because you will find as time goes on with standups and this is starting to happen to me is people who are okay with jokes about them all of a sudden turn out not to be right. like, there's this thing now. Kreischer's dealing with that with his daughters. I believe it. Yeah. 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 Where it's like, where it's like, it's all innocent. It's all kind of, there's no ulterior. He, he said, he said one time when she, wa- he, she wa- as a now a teenager watching his yeah. standup special, she goes, is this what you've been talking about? I thought you were being funny and cute. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Yeah, it's like, yeah. This is what you've been saying about us all right. this time? So, oh, shit. As always, this episode sponsored by BetterHelp. Listen, if you're looking to give online therapy a try, give BetterHelp a try, okay? It's awesome. It's entirely done online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Trusting yourself to make decisions that align with your values is like anything. The more you practice it, the easier it gets. Give BetterHelp a try. Right now, visit BetterHelp.com slash chaos to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash chaos 10 percent off your first month give it a try so you got to think about sometimes too like what you know impact is it going to make on someone but it's tough because i used to think well you could say whatever the hell you want about me i don't care you could literally do an hour stand-up special called chris and stefano sucks i wouldn't i retweet it for you i don't care at all but that's me well, that's Some what I'm other people. To do. Can- so it just so happens that's what I'm planning. Dude, so you thank should. you. This is great, dude. Honestly, <laughs> you. Can- but I think about too, like how we live in a world now, yeah. where like people will bring up people's past. Like you, yeah. all, like like it's like yeah. you live like in this constant fear. And that's bringing me to the Jonah Hill stuff, mm. Vito. If we pull that. Do you, yeah. you know about yeah. the Jonah yeah, Hill situation? By the way, okay. before we graduate to that, how I, I I told you that Louis story right before we went on the air here. My wife, Dad, you did. Did I tell you this story? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And, and, but I just want to say that I just enjoyed. He's such a. He's so full of wisdom and thoughtfulness. I just such a great guy to talk to. Uh, well, really, I, like one of the most enjoyable, like sustained conversations. Lou, other than this, of course. Yeah. That, 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 that I know. I've had a long time. Lou, I really admire him. Louis. Yeah. Louis is awesome, and I think that he's 
even better guy from going through what he went through because again like going through something that like breaks you down and kind of hits your ego hard you become you build yourself back up and and yeah his wit he's so wise when he came in here that's like it's like intimidating sometimes i'm like oh my god i'm like i'm like half retarded so (laughs) 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 you know and and but yeah it's uh, i and i was gonna go to tim dillon's barbecue too but my my kid fucking flipped over the couch and we thought she had a concussion so goddamn kids that would have been so fun i know it would have been great my kid would have yeah probably pissed in the pool or shit in the pool all right um i want to meet your is she your fiance now you're no so we don't uh, cut that no Uh, no 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 she's not and we haven't done that yet but i i i don't know we've been together for so for me, just fucking do it, asshole. We just okay, do but it. There's, but I come. I'm a child of divorce, and a I lot know. Of, I I thought dude, the only thing came after getting married was death. I, I it's, yeah. Turns out it's a pretty rich territory. But did you have? Do you think that there's a difference between like if you were just with your wife for 25 years as opposed to married? Yes. There'd be. And what? Yes. what do you, where do you think it is? And what do you think it, it is? I there, I can only tell you that I was shocked at the altar how uh, transformative and. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, we gay? Just sort of gay. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but it really was uh, just standing up there in front of God and everybody and, dead, and saying to that person, you, this kind of... It's the only contract we have with society. It's the only wow. one. Yeah. And it protects the children. And it's a, it does. The, yeah. the stability and the contract, it, it's, a, it's the only one we have. And it's not just a piece of paper. It has a lot of obligation that t- tied to it, but there was something um, clear. You know, it was, I just felt like I was rising above, almost outside my body. Interesting. Above it, I had totally caught me off guard. I was totally shocked. And I hear all these stories about people wanting to run away at the altar. I, I, I was waiting for mm-hmm. that to happen, where I feel like I got to get out of here. I don't belong right. here. I had the. I was like, this is the exact place I want to be at this exact moment, and I and I, it just is anybody that doubts this, I, fuck them, they're out of my life. You know? Wow, it was just like I was. It was so such clarity, and, and it's like wow, I was really surprised. So it it is. There's a lot to it. There did is. you have children first, or you'd had no, them had your children no, yet? Because do you think yet. that some? Because we had our children first. I think you're you already think- all the way there. To be fair, you know what right. I mean. It, it's almost a formality at this point for you guys. I yes. get that, but it, it does feel different. It just okay. does. And it was it. And I believe me, I was totally unprepared for that. And no prenup. You guys didn't do a prenup. We right? discussed it. She didn't. I I just thought. Eh, yeah. Because sometimes I think with what you'll hear from all, it, oh, if, if you know you have to get a prenup to protect yourself in the event that it doesn't work because so many of them aren't working yeah. as time goes on. But yeah. then if you get the prenup, it's already kind of like hedging, kind of putting negative energy right. and you're, karmic you're, you're planning not for, working. Yeah. So that's why sometimes with all of these thoughts, I'm like, well, we are, you know, if something happened to me tomorrow, all my life insurance, everything goes to her anyway. and the children. Yeah, anyway. anyway. Yeah. So it's like, but it's not, we don't have to do then get the big wedding and but but i know that but i think deep down it hurts her and i don't want to hurt her you know you got to do this yeah too many beautiful weddings and shitty marriages have a beautiful marriage right do do that right whatever that is have the wedding at red lobster or just fucking a little park over here on wooster whatever it's whatever dude let me tell you something having a puerto rican family i've become a pro at having the barbecue birthday party in the park that's what we do yeah i i really i just think it's i just think it's it, it just everything modest, it, it, in, but right. but meaningful. That that's much more important. And really focus on the marriage, not the wedding. Not the okay. The wedding's a waste. Yeah. I and mean, but you want to do it in front of everybody. You want to make it special. Blah blah blah. But but not a. Yeah. Not at the yeah. New York you don't Palace need or something. Anyway, poor Jonah Hill. So Leave poor, him alone, everybody. Leave, Leave that dude alone. So Jonah Hill. So so the thing with Jonah Hill. I is, want to defend him. I know. See, I think too. Like he to me, these texts. If you got, if you people who don't know, Jonah Hill's in some hot water right now because an ex girlfriend of his came out and a year co- later, a year later. So that's what I'm talking about with this past coming back yeah. to bite you. And this is like a tough way to live. Everybody Ugh. is because everybody is now constantly well, you, thinking I, about. In one respect, it's good. It's like the Kantian principle: live as though essentially a camera's running on you at all times. Right. Like live that way, and, right. and that's not a bad idea. Right. So this kind of brings that home a little bit but this was still ridiculous it's sort of disgusting it, it, taking it, a private text conversation and showing it to the world yeah I, I and because for me it was like if jonah hill was acting this way with saying like you need to do this do this do this and then kind of also if he was just saying that okay i, I still don't think 
showing the text is the right move. Yeah. But I get like this is a lot, you know, uh, the the it, it's very like insecure or whatever. But he clearly says in the messages she showed. Yeah. This is just what I demand yeah. in a relationship. That Not even you can demand leave. is I can't tolerate. I can't this. tolerate, it, and so, these are so my boundaries. To be, to be fair, I mean, it, it, his part is if you can't stand your girlfriend in a bikini around dudes, don't don't get involved with a bikini model who's a surfer. Right, right, right. <laughs> just don't do that. Yeah, it reminds you of guys that get involved with strippers. I can handle it, no problem. I can handle yeah. it, no problem. Fast forward three weeks, you got caught. You got to quit that job. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They guys, yeah. guys are that way. He at least had the had the balls not to make her quit her job and just go, hey, I just am having trouble with this. Right. That, you, if you read his words, they're very reasonable. Yes. Yeah. It's just, it's like, hey, you know, it, there's a lot of therapy speak in it, which I found kind of like, oh, come on. Yeah, but that guy but, starts the therapist But Netflix he's been show. getting therapy lately. He's talked about how he's sure. had trouble and been in therapy. And so he's sort of using that to help right. himself. But I think, look, it was a healthy exchange. The bad thing was he, he should understand that's who he was involved with. That's right. all. It's well, that's what I'm saying. Fault. As a doctor, you look yeah. at that and say that's actually a healthy exchange yes. on his part, even, yes. if the, even if he is being a bit insecure about things. Very, he's terribly insecure. He never should have been with this person. He should work on all that for sure. But he. Didn't, but she's not a victim of abuse. Imagine if he were yeah. aggressive and jealous and violent and all the stuff that guys can do. Right. Oh, yeah. this wasn't that. Yeah. Do you think this has any effect on him career-wise at all? Or do you think we're in a society moving past that I, and kind I, of having these conversations I, I now? I hope so. I mean, I, I I was, you know, a friend of mine got had some stupid shit come, happen like this, and he almost lost some jobs, I mean, really serious jobs in, right. in entertainment. Bill Cosby? <laughs> he did lose some jobs, as a matter of fact. <laughs> yeah. uh, but but it, it blew over. I told him it would, but it took a while. Right. And in the meantime, they're kind of radioactive. Nobody wants to. We, it's, it's a terrible business, right? If somebody's sure. the least bit radioactive, nobody yeah. wants to do anything. You know, yeah. Blah, blah, blah. And th they need to stop. They, 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 he needs to go write another comedy and just come right out. Yeah. yeah. But what do you think about like now that everybody's using a therapy talk? Like right now, it's a trend on TikTok that everybody's using it a little it's, bit incorrectly. It's disturbing to me. It's disturbing because you know why? Because people have lost track what treatment is supposed to be. It's not supposed to be a cognitive process. It's not a language-based experience. There is language involved. There's talking involved. But at its core, it's one person sitting trying to get connected to deep feelings while another person listens with their whole body and tries to attune to it. Right. Whatever words are exchanged between the two of them, are incidental. If you're going to see a therapist that's talking all the time, I mean, there is cognitive behavioral therapies, and they do work for certain things, mm -hmm. but it's it's taking over. It's it's really not the core experience of of therapy. I was in therapy for ten years, and uh, it was it's very meaningful. To I was not well connected to my primary feelings, and to have somebody attuned to you deeply and just listen quietly, right. it's it's a big experience. Yeah, and I think people. Also, when they do things like this, like lash out, uh, not lash out, but like kind of want to uh, take somebody down. They don't understand. They're also they're taking themselves down because then the spotlight gets turned back I, on you. I then guess. you open yourself up I, I guess. You well, open these days, for ridicule. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and you have to really think about like why are again, unless you are the victim of like something heinous, like physical violence or whatever, and you want to, you know, you need to get help for that, yeah. then of course do it. But stuff like this, it just feels all so egotistical Gross, and narcissistic yeah. yes. and oh, ego-driven right on, on both, on everybody's all part. All roads lead to narcissism right well, now. I'm like, that, that is a good point. It is not, that is not technically a boundary. That is a, yeah. the, the boundaries are emotional, you know, d differences where you can tell what emotions I'm having are belong to me and not somebody else. That's a boundary. Mm -hmm. And you set those boundaries around your emotions, not around your, your, uh, expectations right, right it's right. just an expectation I, or i just can't tolerate it mm -hmm. right right yeah yeah i think it's 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 interesting i think it's divided this one's like a big divider because certain people feel you i know, really feel the need to go help jonah hill and rescue him from this <laughs> right I, I, i'm a rescuer so that's my pathology and uh i just think it's so unfair this yeah. poor kid this poor guy it's like, yeah i i i think i think uh yeah anytime you get your um kind of trust violated with like you know private text out it's oh, yeah. it's it's and, a rough and she thing. should move on for sure and she she's he's the wrong guy for her for sure and she's right not to right. feel good about the way he treated her i get that 
but move on. Move on. <laughs> what what is your advice now on like men who just can't really handle uh, their partners and girlfriends like posting on Instagram like photos like how Jonah had his partner doing that and now Kiki Palmer's boyfriend is coming out saying how he was upset that she wore a specific outfit to an Usher concert and he repeated being saying it's the outfit though you a mom and it now is like sparking outrage from this photo just that yeah um it, it's not a, a mom shouldn't wear that is that what she, he said yeah apparently everybody thought he was just being like playful but then he goes into talking about like expectations and like what the I mean, man you, of the you family have, doesn't mean, want there's you. propriety right there's propriety and there is being a parent and there is your kids seeing these things and there's just lovely dress yeah it's, <laughs> it's just, just nice beautiful it's a great dress and I, I, you know, I, I always worry that that this is not a great relationship. There's something going right. on there, right? Um, and and everybody has some of this stuff now, right? Where you feel a little jealous or a little yeah, sure. jealous or that, and and let's just talk about it, bring yeah. it up. But if it's somebody that's really like always out there doing things you can't, you really can't tolerate, it and they're just gonna do it. You got to move on. You got to be you real wonder about that relationship. It's toxicity. It, it, it's just not mutual. Mm -hmm. um, okay, let's get to one quick voicemail, um, and then I think. Well, let's do the. What was the other one, V? There was another one. Uh, yes, let's do this one. So this is. So we got voicemails again. If you want to get involved in the show, three four seven three four three. Three three two one three four seven three four three 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 two one. Me and the guests will always try to give you the best advice we can. This is a good one. We have the advice expert. He, man, there's a whole show. He's had a whole career on it, giving advice. Dr. Drew, let's listen to this. Hey, Chrissy. This is Jay. Um, I just kind of wanted your chaotic advice because I am a new wife of two years now, and we have a beautiful three-year-old daughter. And before I started dating my husband, I was dating who I thought was the love of my life. And he moved to a different country. And I live in a whole different city than I did before now. And we ran into each other in my city on New Year's Eve this past year. And we've been kind of making sure our travel plans align and visit each other when we can. And now I'm wondering if he really is the one for me and the universe is bringing us back together or if I should just focus on my family who, you know, love my family, but my husband has not been the best thing to me. So, you know, I would just love some chaotic advice. Thanks, Chris. Ugh. It's a tough one, right? What a, what a mess. Yeah. I mean, she just had a baby with her husband, right? But yeah. she loves somebody else. What oh can my, you do? Oh, my God. Get therapy. Just Quick. Therapy with the out. husband. No, by yourself. You gotta, okay. You got to figure this out because, you know, somebody needs to assess whether or not she's somebody that can trust her attractions, first of right. all. Like you, you and I have been found we could, we could trust it, but lots of people, the attractions lead them in terrible directions repeatedly. Right. And if you're a trauma survivor, like let's say her dad, like her dad was a certain abusive, abandoning, whatever. Whenever she has the kinds of really strong feelings, it's going to end in a disaster. Right. And that's exactly, this guy obliged her by abandoning her. So right. I'm guessing that that her, she doesn't have a dad or something, or her dad yeah. left or was an alcohol or something. Right. Uh, and so that's what, those are the things she finds overwhelmingly attractive. And that's her psychopathology being acted out. In the meantime, she has somebody that really loves her, that committed to her. They have a child together. I mean, look... <laughs> She made her bet, not just made her bed, but she made a bet right. on this family. And she, I think, has an obligation to see it through and at least take care of herself emotionally with, with a good therapist, I hope, uh, to understand what's going on here so this doesn't, she doesn't sabotage. You know, this, she sounds like somebody that sabotages close relationships. Yes. And th things that are abandoning, she can't resist. Yeah. And so that is, that's a problem. That's not going to go well. Yeah. My, so get therapy. <laughs> get therapy. And then my, that's Dr. Drew's advice. My advice would be to tweet your text messages with the husband. That's what I think you should do. Is just, to the world? Just tweet <laughs> screenshots tweet, tweet, out of them. No, tweet the one with the, with the ex-boyfriend. Yes, of the yeah, ex-boyfriend. Yeah. 
Yes, wait. Right. Yeah, yeah. Wait till the new well. guy is having a baby with another woman, and then yeah. and then you tweet it out. <laughs> Do that. That's what I. That's honestly. So I mean, for, you can you can feel the chaos burgeoning here, right? Yes, you can see it coming. This it is, is, a, is this is this. I mean, this is like this is chaos. This podcast called Chris Chaos. It's this, coming. She's not in it yet, but it's coming. But I think she also might be. I'm mean, again. I don't know. It's just a voice moment, but she might feel locked in now. She's got a husband. She's got a kid. My she life is, is so now. In. I want to go like you said, ruin it and go back with the old guy. The fun fling but like we said earlier if it's good for you now it's probably if you're feeling euphoria off it now it's probably bad for you later i think this is a prime example i i, I agree however we don't want to be hypocritical we just described both of us how we both relied on that attraction to yeah. we responded to it we had yeah. it we processed it and, and it worked for us but i you know did you have you had two parents yeah or yeah, yeah. divorced but yeah. very active dad yeah i mean it, it was in my life there was no abandonment in your life no, you weren't no. sabotaging in relationships no. you know no you don't you're not attracted to abandoning people and all that kind of no. thing no this i don't i don't think this is what we have and, and right. it's scary and it's by the way dangerous enough the way we do it yeah you know what i mean it's yeah. it's, it's to really go in with those kinds of lightning bolt attractions right they're fraught with difficulty yeah you know? but they're they're in they're they're good if you can create process. That's it. Good if they can create process. And uh, yeah, man, do you ever think about going old school in your practice and going like Freud and doing a little cocaine while you talk to the patients? Well, that's what I do. I mean, that's my that's why well, we love I Dr. Mean, Drew I can, I, and alcohol. Of course, I'm drinking always <laughs> when I see patients. Yes, <laughs> you have to, baby. Where can no, people I, see? You? I do just general medicine now. I don't. I'm not. Even, I, I do a lot of addiction sort of um, yeah. consulting, but but I'm doing straight outpatient general medicine. Right. Like, like your grandma's caretaker, that kind of thing. Nice, so, dude. Yeah, my, so. I, my grandmother, she's been dead a long time, so she needs your help. So, <laughs> if there's <laughs> anything you can do for congestive heart failure, yeah. all that good stuff. Perform Give her some Ozempic. COPD. Sprinkle it on her bones. See if she wakes up. Um, all do right, you, where you, people... Did you take that stuff? What? Ozempic? No, I never took it. Oh, that's what they accuse you of taking. Oh, this I know. Oh! I never took it. Oh! I, I never well, took it. Sure it sure works. It oh, sure yeah. works. I never <laughs> took it. Um, I never took Munjaro. Munjaro um, works even better. I know. Munjaro is better? Because it has a central and a peripheral action. Wow. Everybody's yeah. about Munjaro now. Because it's a little stronger. Yeah. It's yes. a better. But I, you know, don't take it for a long time. Please don't. I mean, they're. Don't. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, you don't need it for Christ's sake. It's like, just, you want to have sex or what? <laughs> <laughs> we did this again. We did that this morning. <laughs> and, but um, yeah, so hmm. all right, no Munjaro. <laughs> but yeah, um, all right. Where can people see you? Uh, Doctor. dot com. Go there. I got a family of pods. Uh, that's where uh, After Dark is. Oh, that's Ask Doctor Drew. You can see there too. That's at Doctor Drew. TV. Um, we do a streaming show Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at three o'clock. Very interesting interviews with lots of high profile people. Uh, really, if, as soon as somebody gets canceled, I run in and interview them because I want to know what they must have something to say. They must have something useful there, or people wouldn't uh, wouldn't react the way they do. That's what it is. So there it is. And so, yeah, there's all my stuff up there. That's so. what I'll make my appearance on Drew After Dark no, when, the, uh, you, when the 2015 tweets get unveiled. You are After Dark. Did yours area? Yeah, we did. Uh, yours. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. Yeah, yes, yeah. it did. Yep, that was a good time. Yeah. All right, baby, go get out of here, Doctor Drew. All right, man. You Thank sexy you. beast. <laughs>